Hello YouTubers, Kevin here and today we're going to have a look at my portable arcade gaming machine build. I based it on the X Arcade Solo, but first let's have a quick history of the company behind the project. X Gaming was formed around 2000 as a company that sold arcade controller parts to hobbyists. They provided the high quality buttons, joysticks, and even monster sized trackballs needed to build a custom arcade cabinet. Later they spawned another company, X Arcade. X Arcade sold pre-built high-quality arcade controllers that you can plug into your PC directly or use as a base to build a cabinet around. When combined with emulation software like MAME, you have an authentic arcade experience. They have a few models of controller from the big tank stick which has buttons and joysticks for two players plus a large trackball to the X Arcade dual player uh, minus the trackball. I purchased the X Arcade solo single player stick. This thing is built. It's heavy wooden case with eight buttons on top next to the joystick, two flipper buttons on the sides, and a single player start button. On the back, you have the connection cable for a PS2 style keyboard input and a nine pin output. There's also a selection switch for user programmable custom configurations and a power switch. Inside, there is a custom board that takes the button inputs and translates them to keyboard key presses. This board looks to the computer to be a standard keyboard, making it easy to set up your emulation software to take input from the XRK. There's an included adapter cable that takes the 9-pin output to a standard USB connector for your computer. There are many popular emulation programs to choose from. The ever-popular MAME, Multiple Arcade Machine Emulator, MAME emulates the classic arcade hardware, allowing the actual original game ROMs to be played. There's also emulators for classic computer systems like Amiga, Commodore 64, Atari ST, Sinclair Spectrum, Apple II, and MSX. There are console emulators for the Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis, Atari 2600-5200, and PlayStation. The X Arcade controllers make a great addition to any of these emulators, leaving you with an excellent classic gaming experience. Okay, so here's my X Arcade Solo. Let's have a look at the back, and you'll notice a few extras here. USB ports and an Ethernet port, an HDMI output jack, and a power connector. What's going on here? Well, let's open it up. Inside, you can see I've mounted a Raspberry Pi B+. This has a 64 gig micro SD card for the OS and all the game ROMs you might want to load. Plenty of space. Inside the X Arcade itself, we have the wall wart power supply from a uh, cell phone charger mounted here and it runs over and powers the B+, and then we've got an HDMI extension cable bringing the output out, and the power connector up here. There's an excellent emulation package available for the Pi called RetroPie. It includes many of the emulators I've previously mentioned, all together with a great menu-driven system for choosing a game to run. We'll have a look at that in a moment. Okay, so I brought my TV out here to uh, demonstrate, and uh, it's just any, it's just a Shark TV, just any old TV or monitor with an HDMI input is all you need. So you can take the the uh, XRK to your friend's party, plug it into his TV, plug it in the power, and be ready to game. Let's hook it up. I could have originally wired all of the button inputs to the GPIO pins internally on the Pi to make it cleaner. But I elected to keep the original cables intact and use their connection cable. The reason being I want to be able to use the X Arcade as a standalone controller on any computer still. I didn't want to eliminate that functionality. So first thing we do is we hook up their little 9-pin adapter to USB to one of the Raspberry Pi USB inputs. Now you'll notice the uh, Raspberry Pi has an Ethernet connector. This is still very useful for RetroPie. I'll show you why. When the uh, RetroPie is connected to your network, it's browsable 
and it provides Windows shares that you can use to transfer ROMs to it. So here you can see in my network browser, if I browse the network, I see a RetroPie entry. I open that up. It's going to ask me to log into it. Well, there's our shares. The one we're interested in is the ROMs folder. Now it's going to ask me to log in. The default user is Pi, P-I, and the default password is Raspberry. Once connected, we will see all the ROM folders for the different emulators on the RetroPie, and we could easily just drop our images right across onto it on the network. It makes it very easy and quick to load it up with game ROMs. Okay, let's get back to the demo. Okay, so we've hooked up the XR cave to the USB input on the Pi. We take our HDMI cable to the TV, plug it into the HDMI output. And finally, power. Okay, the Raspberry Pi is booting. Initially, we'll see the RetroPie splash screen. RetroPie is built on the popular emulation station emulator front end for Linux and I think Windows as well. Obviously we're running a Linux version. Emulation station will load up and it will present us with a menu for all of the systems for which we've installed uh, ROMs or disk images, tape images, or other game information. Now we're presented with the initial selection for the emulators. You can choose which emulation you want to play or run, which game system. It shows you the uh, systems for which you've installed software. Um, the other emulators will not appear unless there's something loaded for them. So let's hop into main. The buttons have been pre-configured uh, for key presses and I've already configured the inputs to the emulator so that I can use the buttons and the joystick to move through and select things. If you have a lot of games you can jump to a, a letter in your list and then select your game by simply scrolling through the list. I have a button configured over on the right here to insert coins. And then the start player button to start. Using the buttons I can exit out of the emulator and go choose another game. So you can play just about anything you want. While in the game selection area, you can choose another emulator. Uh, Mario Kart. It 
Super Nintendo. The Retro Pie menu lets you configure a lot of things about Retro Pie right within the uh, system. If you plug in a Wi Fi interface, you could actually get it on your network with Wi Fi. Uh, one more game. Then once you're uh, done playing and you're ready to quit, there's a menu here where we can quit and shut down the system. Being that it's a, basically a little computer, you do want to shut it down when you're done. So there you go, my XRK portable game system build. All you need is that and a TV. Take it to your friend's house, be the life of the party, have lots of fun. Hope you've enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. 73s to my ham friends. And uh, share. You know, share the video if you enjoyed this. Helps me out. Bye-bye.